Fortunately, no one woke up as I quietly stole outside and paused on the back porch to put my shoes and jacket on. It's just his eyes. <laughs> I was wondering what his profile picture would be. I mean, it is his best feature, so. I'm heading out. In the backyard. I'm at the back gate waiting. Figured you'd come out this way. I quickly hopped off the porch and headed to the gate, glancing back at the house apprehensively. I was suddenly afraid. What was really going to happen? I trusted Ewan, but even he seemed leery of Brenna and his dad. Even so, what else could I do? As I passed the fairy ring, I shot at a glance. As always, I felt a strange pull toward it. I faltered, briefly. If I looked at it just right, I could almost see... No. No? I couldn't get distracted. I quickened my pace and let myself out the back gate. A shadow moved close by, and it was Ewan. Hey. Hi. Come on, let's do this fast. They're not far off. He led me down the back path to the trees. I followed behind him silently, really hoping this turned out okay. I was nervous about sneaking out. It was a little strange, because I had done it so many times already. It was just that usually I didn't worry about things like getting into trouble or getting caught because I was asleep. This time, though. Ugh, not that I needed something else to worry about. My foot came down on some wet leaves, and I nearly let out a shriek as I slid a few feet and crashed into Ewan. We both staggered forward, but he managed to catch himself and me before we hit the ground. Sorry. I was speaking in a whisper, but my voice sounded so loud in the cold night. It's okay. He took my hand and squeezed it. You scared? Only completely terrified. I want to get this over with. Just a little while longer. We headed deeper into the trees, and soon the lights from the house vanished. It felt creepier than usual. It was so dark, and the woods were silent. More so than usual as if everything was waiting for... whatever we were about to do. I moved closer to you and more unnerved than ever. We didn't walk far before I heard... singing. I tensed instantly. There was always singing in my dreams. Faint. Beautiful. Ominous. This was... different. How to say... um... Dad! Logan! Stop singing! <laughs> stop making me sing in this horrible Scottish accent I'm trying to put on that is not a Scottish accent. <sighs> Great. Well, that'll break the tension. Yo and was a roving boy, ranting, roving, ranting, roving. You and was a roving boy, ranting, roving. You and ill high misfortunes, great and small, but I a heart a boon them all. You'll give his daddy's name a blow. We'll all be proud of you and. <laughs> I shot Ewan an amused look in the dim light, some of my apprehension evaporating as I recognized that voice. Ewan, on the other hand, looked very unamused. That is not how the lyrics go. <laughs> no, but it's more fun that way. I had no idea what the heck his dad was up to, but we didn't walk much further before we hit a small clearing where he and Brenna were waiting. It looked like they'd been busy. I could just make out the mark on the ground. It looked like a rough circle with a star inside. I counted seven points. Brenna had a large thermos in hand, something that kind of broke the otherwise mysterious feel to everything. Good timing! We've just finished up, then we have plenty of time to spare. We're on a time limit? We have a window of a few hours. We need to get this done by three. Why? There is a bit of an upswing in magic energy between midnight and three in the morning. Yes, let's read about that, shall we? Magic energy. Oh, boop, boop. Man, there's still so much to read. No, no. 
There we go. The Witching Hour is a time frame during which there is a small swell of magic energy. There is some debate on the exact time frame that can officially be called the Witching Hour. Some say it's the hours from midnight to 3 in the morning. Some say it lasts until 4. Others state that it's specifically 3.33 a.m. Regardless, during those times, magic is more easily performed and there will generally be supernatural things afoot. Oh right, I think I read about it. The witching hours or something? Right. You can do it at any time, but it just might not work as well. Or at all. Or it could just go really wrong. Really, really wrong. Don't let him be worrying ya. We set it all up to be as safe as it can be. So, now what? Ewan was still gripping my hand pretty hard. He pulled me gently to the center of the star. You'll want to kneel here. Well, this is comforting. It's a fairy star, nothing nefarious. Fairy stars? My goodness. Alright, where's the fairy star? Mm, ah, the Septagram, or Fairy Star, has seven points to represent Sun, Moon, Magic, Spirit, Sea, Forest, and Wind when used for most magic. However, the Fairy Star can also be used as a gateway to other worlds, specifically to Fairy. In this case, the points represent seven entrances to Fairy. Seven is an important number to Fairies in general, being a sign of perfection and balance. This will ensure a safe return to your current home. It'll prevent the Fae from just setting you loose somewhere. And nabbing you again while you're vulnerable. So drink this and shut up! <clears throat> Eloquent as ever. She tossed me the thermos and I fumbled to catch it. What is it? It's a potion that'll drive you out of the fairy's body, sever the magic binding you to the contract, and force them to return you. Is it safe? No magic is safe, little girl. Magic works, or it doesn't. That's what matters. Fine, fine. Are you sure it'll work? Logan stepped in the circle and crouched next to me. It'll work, but you need to listen. You've been in that body a long time. I don't know how long. I can't see that far. When you come to, you may be a little confused. You may not remember everything. Just try to stay put until we find you. And... We're going to make some enemies doing this. If it was anyone else helping you, the Fae might count it as a loss and move on. But that Fae in you is going to recognize us no matter who she is. It may not be over just because we get you back. Remember that. And be wary. Sure. That sounds encouraging. And I had no idea how I'd be wary if my memories were going to be screwed up after this. He and Ewan stood and left me alone in that circle, feeling more than a little intimidated. And Ewan didn't stop with Logan and Brenna. He actually started out of the clearing entirely. I felt a moment of panic as he abandoned us. Y Ewan? I started to get to my feet. Don't worry. It's just heading back to your home, so it'll be waiting for you when you're returned. Uh, okay. It's going to be alright. Just trust me. That wasn't reassuring, given my previous conversation with Ewan. Alone with Brenna and Logan, I shivered again, though it wasn't because of the cold. Alright, Nora. It's now or near. I looked over at him, then down at the thermos. I didn't really like the idea. Drinking some weird potion. Do I really have to drink it? We could douse you, but... Well, this won't be completely pleasant either way. But drinking it will ease the pain somewhat. You neglected to mention this was going to be painful. Logan smiled awkwardly. We're trying to make it as easy as we can. No, it's... it's fine. Let's just get this over with. I unscrewed the cap, squeezed my eyes shut, and without any further ceremony, drank the liquid as fast as I could, before I could change my mind. The potion hit my stomach like lead, and I barely swallowed it all before coughing as my throat started to burn. Even with my eyes shut, the world seemed to spiral and whiz around me. 
I wanted to double over and retch, but I was worried if I did, I would fall down and never stop falling. I was trapped, floating in a deep, dark space surrounded by whispering voices. They passed over me like moth wings. I swirled faster and faster. Up was down, left was right. I had no idea where I was. There was a soft whisper, angry, frantic. My eyes jolted open as if I had been dreaming and tripped down a stair. One moment the world was nothing but darkness, and the next I was standing, staring up at the stars. What? Where? Why was I outside? I didn't remember. I looked around worriedly. Outside. Night. I glanced down at myself. Dress. Like I'd been hiking or something. But at night? I glanced behind me at the unfamiliar path that led up to an unfamiliar row of houses. Where on earth am I? Ugh. I put a hand to my head. Everything was so... fuzzy. So weird. I started up the path because, well, my only other option was the woods. There was something familiar about one gate, partially open. I peered inside and... and... That's right! This is the new house! How could I have forgotten that? I stepped inside, still unsure why I was outside at night, but two arms snaked out of the darkness and wrapped around me. Nora! <laughs> Let go! I tried to yank myself away from the assailant. I couldn't even see. Away from the assailant I couldn't even see. He held me tightly against his chest. Nora, are you alright? Who was this? I mean, it should be you and right? <laughs> I'm trying to think how to make him realize that it's not like she doesn't remember. <laughs> so maybe like grabbing her from behind was like not the best idea. <laughs> so like if I elbow him in the stomach, that's par for the course for what she does. Uh, at least this is a three. I have a two and three chance of getting this right. A part of me is curious if he might try to kiss her. She tries shouting for help and then it'll be like all the memories flooded back. <laughs> I'm morbidly curious. I feel like the desperately try to escape is the bad one. I want to try the top one. I'm, I, I need to know for science. Kidnapper? Somehow that felt familiar. Someone, huh? A hand clapped over my mouth, muffling my voice instantly. Nora, Nora, shh. <laughs> I struggled in the man's embrace, trying to get away. Nora. Nora, stop it! Don't you know who I am? No. Should I? How would I know a random kidnapper? <laughs> I was cursing my heart out at him, but his sweaty palms stopped me from conveying the full depths of my rage. I just sounded like a deranged goat. I twisted around, digging my nails into his hands, kicking whatever my foot could come into contact with. Ow! Oh, damn it! Nora, stop! He hissed quietly, still trying to keep his voice down. And in that moment, I really regretted that my parents were deep sleepers. I'm going to let you go, so stop shouting! Eh. Just... Please, don't scream. We'll both be in trouble if you do. What? I struggled away, and this time he let me go. I stumbled and whirled around as he backed off, holding his hands up. Well, no kiss. Darn. I had to know for science, though. He was tall. Really tall. And wearing a leather jacket. And was slightly familiar. I put a hand to my head as I tried to remember. Why was it so hard to remember? He was... This person was... We moved. And there was a club... We were reading Shakespeare. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes? 
Yorick. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to mind. Was he reading Yorick's parts? I mean, that's stupid. No one's going to name their kid Yorick. The stranger closed his eyes as if summoning up all of his patience. You've been through an ordeal, so I'm going to ignore that. This time. <laughs> Ewan also hated- WAIT! The realization hit me like lightning. Suddenly, everything rushed back at once. The club, magic was real, I was a changeling, and... Ewan! Relief washed over you, and as he pulled me to him in another tight hug, I didn't fight to get away this time. Oh, thank goodness. To be fair, this time he's not grabbing me from behind. Yeah, that was maybe not the best plan. He pressed, he pressed his cheek to the top of my head, and at the back of my mind, I thought about how comical he must look bending over that far. But I didn't say it. I wrapped my arms around him and hugged him back just as fiercely. I was too relieved to see him. To remember him, for joking. For now. You remember me? Of course! Well, I mean, I sort of forgot. Briefly. But yes, I remember you now. Of course I remember you. Though I really had forgotten everything for a few minutes there. That was kind of terrifying, actually. Are you okay? He pulled back, holding me at arm's length. I... I think so? My head's still a bit fuzzy. How much do you remember? Hard to say. If there's something I haven't remembered, I'm not going to remember that I don't remember. He rolled his eyes at that. What? It's true! Do you remember about the ritual? Ritual? There were hesitant flickers of some kind of memory when he said that. Brenna in a clearing holding something. A seven-pointed star. Right. I sort of remember what happened. You left, and I drank that... thing. Everything was burning, and... I heard voices. Then... I was here. Wait! Did you see them return me? I was hiding. Just... listening. I didn't want to push my luck and deal with however many of them showed up. I placed a hand to my chest, looking around. I don't... really feel any different. Ewan reached a hesitant hand out and picked up a lock of hair. Your hair is longer. I patted my head and ran my hands through it myself. Whoa! He was right, it was way longer. Guess the Fae aren't much for haircuts. I realized he was still holding that lock of hair, gently twisting it beneath his fingers. Dong. His knuckles grazed the side of my face. I reached up almost in a daze and took his hand. Your... your hand is cold. Your face is cold. Is that some kind of insult? No, your face really is freezing. I gripped his hand tightly, letting out a shaky breath as the gravity of everything that had happened really hit me. I'm so glad you're okay. Yeah, well, I mean, me too. I don't know how to thank you for this. Without you and your dad, I would still have no idea what was going on. More my dad than me. Not true. Not true at all. I don't feel like I did much to help. You've helped me repeatedly. Oh my god, just accept the thanks already, jeez. Ewan smiled slightly. Fine. You're welcome. That's at least two coffees you owe me now. Alright. Challenge accepted. Why don't we meet tomorrow? Today. Whatever. What time even is it? Very, very early. Strangely, I didn't feel tired at all. So... coffee? Ewan grinned slightly, taking a step closer. Is this just paying me back, or is it a date? Heh <laughs> I flushed, my face going weirdly hot. It... it... do you... want it to be a date? I'm not, um... Totally opposed. So you're somewhat opposed, then? He sighed softly. <laughs> Flirting's hard, okay? Uh, no. I'm not opposed at all. Good. I mean, I'd hate to have to show up at your job and drag you off in front of your dad. 
I hesitated. Will you help me, um, figure out how to pay him back? And Brenna? I feel like I should. I think it's probably wise. He swallowed nervously and leaned a little closer. I should let you go inside. It's cold. Probably not all that safe out here either. Right. Um, I guess this is good night. Yeah. I looked up at him, and for a long moment we were both silent. He was staring down at me, eyes half closed. Kiss her, kiss her, kiss her, man, kiss her. And I realized he was leaning a bit closer. Oh. Oh, is he? Ah! Ah, oh, it was so it was so perfect. It, the whole lead up was so perfect. Drat. A sudden shaft of faint light hit the both of us and I whirled around. Someone's awake. Get inside now. <laughs> well, at least we can play it off as a secret meeting at night. <laughs> I don't know if that helps us though. He bolted across the backyard, and I watched him for a split second before I slipped inside quickly and tore my jacket off. There was absolutely no hiding that I was fully dressed as I sidled behind the island just as Spencer came down. Nora? I paused with one hand on the kettle and one reaching for a mug. Spencer squinted at me in the dim light. Is that... you? He stood at the foot of the stairs, tired and confused. His hair was must, and he looked like he was still half asleep. Who did you think? Santa? What are you doing? I couldn't sleep. I was about to make hot chocolate. Spencer stood there still, staring at me for a long time. I expected him to ask why I was dressed, but he just started back upstairs. Whatever. I'm going back to bed. Good night? He was gone before I'd even finished speaking. You ruined the perfect setup for a kiss, Spencer. I hope he didn't notice the hair. I'd have to wear it up for a few days so Mom wouldn't notice, at least until I could get it trimmed. It was nearly past my waist now. I leaned against the island, glancing at the clock. I should probably wait a bit before going up. Long enough to have feasibly made hot chocolate. A shadow flitted across the stairs and I started staring with wide eyes. Oh, hello. A small shape stooped and a strange creature crept out of the shadows. Oh, the brownie! I'd forgotten that as well. Shh. I put a finger to my lips and it mirrored me. <laughs> I love you, man. That's right. It looked at me for a moment, then vanished down the hall without a sound. Nobody else can hear it but you. <laughs> After about 20 minutes, I crept back up to my room, shoes and jacket in hand. I was still piecing things together. There were a few holes in my memory still. Faces without names, or names without faces. But it was starting to come back to me. The important parts, anyway. I remembered the club and my research. I remembered the conversation where Logan told me I was a changeling. My phone buzzed in my hand as I tried to figure out what was still missing. Ewan. I opened the message quickly, hoping nothing had gone wrong on his way home. Home? Are you okay? I'm fine. Just Spencer. Figures it would be the evil twin. Everything okay? Yes, we're fine. How's the memory? Not sure. Getting better, though. Won't assume anyone else is a kidnapper. Probably. Lucky them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ewan. Things were tumbling back into place, bit by bit. Ewan and I continued to text until the sky grew faint with watery light. We slowly went over everything that had happened since I moved back. Some things I recalled, others I didn't. Ewan reminded me about the Spriggan. I'd forgotten about that, and that... that weird bridge. The way I kept having strange feelings underneath it. He reminded me about the sleepwalking, and how it was probably the fairy whose body I was in trying to get me back to fairy. And he reminded me that even now I should be careful. As I finally snuggled back into bed, there was still one part of the conversation replaying in my head. Ewan was... 
gently reminding me that, in spite of everything, I may not really be normal anymore. I had spent at least five years in fairy, probably much more. All that exposure to fairy magic had undoubtedly changed me. At best, I would retain sensitivity to magic and probably the ability to use it. At worst, I wasn't even human anymore, though I wouldn't be Fae either. He said he'd be able to get a better feel for it when we met later in the day. I wasn't sure how I felt about that, to be honest. On one hand, if I was suddenly shut out of the club, shut out of all this, I'd feel, I don't know, it would be weird. I think I'd miss it in a weird way, but at the same time it would have been a relief as well. As it was, I was getting warnings to be careful, to remember that the Fae weren't gone, they'd just given me back. And it didn't mean they wouldn't try to take me again sometime, and that I might not even be human anymore. Which I had kind of accepted that, but now it felt weird all over again. I threw an arm over my face. I felt confused, frustrated, and like I hadn't had time to properly absorb any of this. It all happened too fast. I just needed time to decompress, to think about it all, write it down, and just really, really think about it.